Hi, this is Anil from Learning Lad and welcome to another pattern programming tutorial on C programming language. And in this video, I will show you how you can print the pattern which you are seeing in the screen. So this pattern looks like a right angle triangle pattern. And the thing is, you know, we have the numbers here. In the previous video, I have shown how you can print the right angle triangle pattern with the stars. But here we have the numbers and the numbers are in a particular order in here in this pattern. Now after explaining how we can build this program for this pattern, I will also explain the variations that you can do with this pattern. Now let's come back to this pattern. Now this is a right angle triangle pattern and I have already drawn this image in terms of rows and columns. So we have one, two, three, four and five rows and one, two, three, four and five columns. Now, if you look at this first row here, then we have only one column and in the second row, we have two columns. In the third row, we have uh, three columns. In the fourth row, we have four columns. And similarly, if we extend this pattern to 100 row, then the 100th row will contain 100 columns. Now let's come back to what is printed here in these columns. Here in the first row, we have only one column and we have printed one. In the second row, we have two columns and we have printed two. Now in the third row, we have three columns and we have printed three. So the notable thing here is we are printing the row number here in these columns. And also we have the row number of columns present in that particular row, which is nothing but if we're going to have the row number four, then there are four columns in that row and each column is filled with the value four. Now, if you look at here, we have the row four and here we have four columns and each column is filled with the value four, which is nothing but the row number. So the first thing is we have row number of columns present in each row and each columns in each row contain the row number. That is, once again, I will explain if we have the uh, row six here, then here we're going to have six columns, one, two, three, four, five and six. And each column will be filled with a value of six. This six is this row number. So each column will contain six here. So we are going to use these two things and we're going to write the C program. So now let's see how we can write the C program for this. All right. Now, once we start writing the program for this pattern, the first thing that we need to know is how many number of rows we want to print with this pattern. So the first thing we need to know is number of rows. And here I have drawn five rows with this pattern. That's why we're going to take this value as five here. And I will explain the program with the value of five. And then later I will explain you how you can uh, print the pattern for any number of rows as entered by the user. So the first thing we need to know is the number of rows. And then secondly, what we're going to do is we're going to print this pattern row by row. We're going to go to the first row. We're going to print the required columns with whatever the value we have to print. And then we will go to the next row. And then again, we are going to print the required number of columns with the uh, whatever the value. And then we will go to the third row and we will print the required number of columns with the specific value. So here, since we are going to be looping through these rows and columns, we need two more variables. And my first variable is going to be row and the second variable will be column. All right. Now, as I said before, we will start from the first row and we will print all the columns for that first row and then move on to this next row. And then we're going to move on to the next row. So here we need to loop through all the rows and that's why we need a loop here. And I'm going to use a for loop. Now here, first we're going to start from the first row. So here in this for loop, we're going to initialize the row variable with a value of one. And then the condition is how many rows we want to print. And that value is obtained from this number of rows variable. 
so the for loop condition will be row less than or equal to number of rows all right now after printing whatever we want to print for each row we want to move on to the next row so we will do row plus plus that is we are incrementing the value of the row variable by one so that we can move to the next row and print this pattern all right now we have a for loop which will uh, provide us access to each row that is when we run this program this um, for loop will start from one and then it will become two three four and five so it will give access to each rows now we need to access each columns for each rows and that's why we need to use another loop and this is also going to be a for loop and as i said before we need to access the columns of every row and every row has different number of columns so we will use a for loop and here we will start printing the pattern from the first column for every row so we will initialize the variable column with the value of 1 means we will be starting from the first column and then we're gonna have the condition and the condition is how many column that we want to print for a particular row and we know that the number of columns that we have to print for a particular row is nothing but the row number that is in the fourth row we have to print four columns and here the number of columns that we have to print is the row number and in this program we know the row number from the row variable so the condition here will become column less than or equal to row and then after printing one column we want to move on to the next column if required for example for the first row we just need to print one column but for the second row we need to print two columns so after printing one column we will move on to the next column and then if needed we will move to the next column like that all right now here what we want to print in the previous video which was about printing a right angle triangle with stars so in that time we were just printing the star character or any other character that you wanted to print but here if you look at this we have the row number printed in each columns of the respected row so for example in the fifth row we have row number five is printed in each columns of this row and that's why here we need to print out the row number and we will get the row number in the row variable so we will print the row this will end the for loop now this for loop which is the inner for loop which we have here this will print all the columns as required for every row now after printing each row we need to take the output to the next line so now after printing each row whatever the number of columns we need to move on to the next line so that's why we need to add a new line statement and we will add that that is after this inner loop we will add this printf function so this printf function will be outside this inner loop inner for loop all right now what this program will do is the for loop which we have in the outer side which is used for the rows so it will become one for the first iteration now the inner for loop will calculate how many columns that we have to print and then it will print that character in those columns so here for the first iteration of this um, outer for loop you know the row variable will contain a value of one so here this inner for loop will run only once because after the first execution this condition will fail for example after printing the first star this column variables value become two and that's why in the first uh, row we're gonna have only one star and then in the second row we will have two star in the third row we will have three star and the program will continue like that so now we're gonna see how we can write the program for this pattern all right now we are going to write the program and i have already opened up the code blocks ide and i have included the stdio.h header file and also i have created the main function 
now we're going to start declaring the variables and the first variable that we need is the number of rows variable to store the number of rows that we want to print and i will call my variable as number of rows and right now i'm going to initialize this with a value of 5 now later i will explain how you can take the input from the user and store that input in this number of rows variable so that you can execute your pattern for as many rows requested by the user now we need a couple more variables and one is the row variable to store the row value another one is the column variable to store the column value now we need to print the pattern and we will start from the first row so as i said before we need to start from the first row and then we need to move to the next row then next row the next row until we reach the required number of rows and that's why we will use a for loop here and as i said before we will start from the first row so we will initialize the row variable with the value of one and then the condition will be row less than or equal to number of rows because for how many rows we need to print this pattern is stored in this number of rows variable so that's why we can have the condition row less than or equal to number of rows and then after printing the first row we need to increment the value of the row variable so that it can move on to the next row now here we have access to all the rows now we need to print the columns with the numbers all right now after printing a particular row we need to take the output to the next line so we will add a new line here using the printf statement that is this for loop will run for first row and then second row and then third row and then fourth row and then for fifth row so here after printing the first row we want to add a new line in the output so that the next pattern will be printed will appear in the next line after printing out the second line our second row we want to add again a new line so that the next row will appear in the third row or the third line that's why we will be adding this new line here now here for this row for every row we have to print the columns so we will be using another for loop and here we will start from the first column so we can initialize the column variable with a value of one and then the number of columns for every row depends on the row number because in the first row we have only one column and in the second row we have two columns similarly in the fifth row we have five columns so the number of columns present in a particular row depends on the row number and that row number is available in the row variable and that's why we will have this condition here and after that we will increment the column variables value and then here in every column we need to print whatever that we have to print and here we have to print the row number in the columns so we will use a printf function and we will use the percentage d format specifier because row number is an integer value and then we will specify the row variable here because row number is available in this row variable now after printing this row number I will add a tab so that the output can look better. All right. Now I'm going to save this program and I will build and run this. And I have an error here and the error is I have used print line method here. And in C we have printf, no print line method. So that is a mistake that I have made. And I will correct that and I will build and run this again. So this time the program runs and we, we and we get this pattern here. So we have the row number printed in each rows with row number of columns in uh, each row. So we're going to close this. And the next thing that we're going to do is we can ask the user to enter the number of rows he wants. So I will remove this initialization part 
and then after declaring the variables I will use a printf function and by using this printf function I will ask the user please enter the number of rows and after asking that let's insert a new line and then we will use a scanf function and we will read the input or whatever the value entered by the user and we will store that in the number of rows variable all right now this program will print the pattern for the number of rows entered by the user so let's build and run this and it, it is asking now so let me enter 8 here and if i hit the enter button now you guys can see it is printing this pattern here and similarly if i build and run this again and this time if i enter 2 you guys can see this pattern is printed for only two rows so now this is how you guys can write this program now i'm going to show you guys the variations that i that you can do with this pattern so here if you look at this pattern we are printing we are printing the row numbers in each rows for example in the third row we have the row number three printed in all the columns now if you want to print the column number in each columns for every row which is nothing but this pattern here if you see this we have only one column in the first row and in the second row we have two columns and the thing is the difference from the previous pattern is uh, in the previous pattern we were printing up the row number but here we are printing the column number for example in the third row if you look at it we have three columns in the third row and in each columns we are printing the column number that is in the first column we are printing one in the second column we are printing two in the third column we are printing three so we can use this program and achieve this pattern just by tweaking a little bit and which is nothing but here instead of printing the row number we will print the column number so just replace the row variable by with column here and then save your program build and run this enter the number of rows let's say six and now you guys can see we are printing the column number in every column for every row so this pattern has been printed here now another variation that we can do here which is nothing but this pattern here if you see this then the number of columns present in each row is exactly equal to the row number which is nothing but in the fourth row we have four columns but the thing is all these columns are containing the numbers in continuous order which is nothing but in the first column which is printed we have one and then the next column which is printed has two the next column which is printed has three and then four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so numbers are continuously growing here with this pattern so we can achieve this pattern with this same code and just need to add a bit more information here that is we will declare another variable and i will call it as counter and i'm going to initialize this variable with a value of one so here what we are going to do is while printing the value in those columns we will print the counter variables value and after printing that value we will just increment the counter variables value so that the next time it when it is printed it will print the next number and again after printing it will get updated and the next time when it is printed it will print the next number so the pattern will continue and uh, uh, just to demonstrate I'm gonna build and run this and this time I'm gonna enter the number of rows 8 now you guys can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and similarly we have the last number 36 here so this is how we can get this pattern just by tweaking a little bit here now you can do a lot of tweakings in here and I highly recommend you guys to experiment with this code and try to print different types of patterns. Now if you like this video then give a thumbs up. 
if you don't like it then give a thumbs down and whatever you have to say just write that in the comment section now if you think that you know this video will help any of your friends then share this video with them and also uh, if you want to watch more tutorials like this then subscribe to our channel and also click on the bell icon which will appear once you subscribe and this will allow you to get a notification whenever i upload a new video so once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial